Question number two, the Leader of the Opposition, David Sheridan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, is, is it, is it the Order. government's intention to proceed with the asset sales programme? Mr Speaker. Honourable Tony Ryle. Absolutely, yes. The programme of minority share floats in a world of a deteriorating international debt crisis is a very important part of the government's wider economic plan to help control debt and fund important social infrastructure like schools, roads and hospitals. Order. 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 Supplementary question, David Shearer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he agree with Meridian Chief Executive Mark Binns that if the TY Point contract falls over, power prices and SOE sale values will fall. Honourable Tony Ryan. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not sure whether or not Mr Binns has actually made those comments. I'd have to rely on what the member said. But what I'd say to that member is that that is a decision that individual investors will be able to make because that information will be made available. Uh, it, all the material information will be made available in the offer document for Mighty River Power. And uh, that's what the government has always said, and it's an opportunity for analysts and investors uh, to chew over the information as they are now and make whatever conclusions they want to draw. Supplementary question, David Shearer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What is his government's best estimate of the loss in the value of Mighty River Power in the event of Meridian and Tiwoy Point deal falling over? Uh, Mr. Honourable uh, Tony Mr. Mr. Speaker, the, I, I hope the member will appreciate that under the Securities Act, ministers are not able to speculate on the likely value of the various mixed ownership model companies. But I would say this to New Zealanders, in light of what the Leader of the Opposition has said, I wouldn't take investment advice from anybody who has a order, couple hundred thousand order, dollars in a bank order, in New York and forget order. That question will lead, that answer will only lead to disorder. Supplementary. Is the government is the government negotiating separately with Rio Tinto, and has Meridian been kept fully in the loop on these negotiations? Honourable Tony Ryan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as the member will appreciate, the negotiations have uh, been run by Meridian up until recent times. They're continuing to discuss. Uh, this week, the government was in contact with Rio Tinto to see what we might be able to do to bridge the gap in the short to medium term in a very moderate amount of money. The longer term is a more significant area, and Meridian are aware of the broad parameters of the government's discussions with Rio. In Sup supplementary question. In light of that last question. part of his answer, how does his answer square with Meridian's advice to the Select Committee today that they have had no advice on the discussions between the government and Rio Tinto? Yes. Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not able to be a uh, comment because I wasn't there at the select committee, but I, I, I am aware that um, I think Mr Binns did say in a media stand-up that they were aware of the broad parameters uh, and we look forward to continuing to discuss uh, those matters. This is a very, very serious issue for New Zealand. Uh, the government is determined to make sure that we can do what we can to assist those two companies to come to a mutually beneficial arrangement for the two. Speaker. Supplementary question, David Shearer. Now that the government has intervened, will they now promise to be transparent about the impact of on electricity prices and SOE sales values? Order has them. Did the minister adequately hear that question? Otherwise, I can ask the question. Uh, yes, I did, I did hear that. Look, I think this government is being very transparent. I'd say to the Leader of the Opposition, transparent. Uh, and all of these matters will be declared as material in the offer document for Mighty River Power. This is what we've said all along. These negotiations between Meridian and, uh, and the uh, Rio Tinto have been ongoing for nine months. People have been very well aware of them, and all material matters will be declared in the offer document. How many Supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. David Speaker. Chair. How many people are employed either directly or indirectly through the operations of the TY Point aluminium smelter? 
Honourable Tony uh, Mr Speaker, I think there's about 750 people who work at the TY Point aluminium smelter, and there'll be other people uh, whose jobs are dependent on that. So it's quite a serious issue. But the government is, uh, has been in touch with Rio Tinto because we recognise the seriousness of this issue and say, look, if there's such a small gap in the short to medium term, uh, we're prepared to see what we can do to bridge that. But the gap in the longer term is significant, and I want to be very clear on this. This government is not interested in subsidising a foreign multinational in the long term. Supplementary question. Order. Sup order. Does he agree with Brian Fellow, who wrote in the Herald, it is folly to press on full steam ahead with the partial privatisation of state-owned power companies when the future of TY Point aluminium smelter is unresolved. Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, I don't agree with that. I think the New Zealand electricity market is well capable of dealing with all the issues around TY Point and these contract negotiations. There is no surprise, there is nothing new to this, uh, this issue in terms of uncertainty. What is important is to remember what this is all about. This is all about uh, the mixed ownership model as part of the wider plan this government has to control debt and to continue investing in important social infrastructure. Question number three, Melissa Lee. Thank you, Mr.